Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, December 13th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Welcome to part two of this War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty News. As always, I have to ask new listeners or those just joining us in part two to please uh, visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. You know, you can basically find most of the videos that I've posted in the past six months uh, on that website, along with a little poll that I'll throw up there and update. Um, but this next article up is going to be Sal Val's, uh new drills, despite warnings. Talking about South Korea here. South Korea says it will continue to stage military drills off all coasts of the Korean Peninsula, despite warnings by the North. A South Korea military spokesman said on Sunday, the new round of Marine gunnery exercises will begin on December 13th and will continue until the 19th at 20, 27 sites as planned. But the scheduled exercises will not take place near the contested Yellow Sea border with the North. So I've already talked about all this. Um, you can look at my other videos, uh, previous videos <clears throat> on uh, North Korea, South Korea, what happened there in my ideas. I don't want to go through the whole explanation about how I think it has more to do with trade. It's a trade area, the Yellow Sea, the South China Sea. And um, basically Clinton and the West kind of nose in on Chinese uh, well, waterways. And um, so to me, I, I think it has nothing to do with the whole clash that had just taken off where basically everybody thought there was going to be World War III again with between North Korea and South Korea. Uh, when, uh, you know, basically there's always kind of, you don't know what exactly happened, who fired first, and all of a sudden you got South Korea playing the victim, just like last year when their ship ran into a landmine from World War II, and so they were attacked, even though some of the people in South Korea said, hey, we weren't attacked, our boat was not attacked. But, anyways, like I said, it's just so much confusion, it's hard to really go into without dragging on for like a couple minutes. But basically, that's what I was getting at. Um, they've been holding drills, the South Koreans have been holding drills along with uh, a NATO naval, for, uh, a naval force, basically the West, okay? <laughs> the, the West has been holding drills with South Korea naval exercises, uh, I want to say for about six months now. So it's not the first time that it happened, just last time. It's actually about the third or fourth drill that they've, an exercise uh, that they've held. So uh, we're going to move on here. South Korea to resume live artillery drills, and then look at this, South Korean boat sinks, 22 dead. At least 22 people have been killed and 20 others rescued after a South Korean fishing boat with 42 crew members sank off the Antarctica, report says. Man, it's just, the weather is just really crazy. I'm going to try to include all the crazy weather in a news bulletin tomorrow. Uh, just, you know, m Mideast uh, facing a lot of rain. A lot of places is, is just either really windy and snowy or a lot of rain and mudslides. Uh, we're going to move on to this next article. It's Israel to hold emergency drill at airport. And it says here Tel Aviv is set to hold an emergency exercise at Israel's central Ben Gurion airport and the surrounding areas to examine the Army's backup readiness. The drill is planned to be held at 11.05 local time on Monday with sirens played through loudspeakers to simulate an emergency. And um, if you're kind of, uh, oh, the drills follow large scale naval exercises Israel held in its bases of Alayat and Hefe. And uh, late November and October, the Israeli army and other military forces carried out a huge maneuver to practice countering mock coordinated attacks and unconventional warfare. Many believe that the recent spate of military drills suggest that Israel is seeking to launch another aggression in the region. And um, if you're kind of new to this information, uh, I don't want to say it's a, really a movement. It's, it's, I don't think it's ever going to stop. It's just basically trying to normal people, just commoners, I guess you can say, <laughs> as we're referred to by the, by the, uh, by the elites. Uh, you know, we're just trying to get information out to each other so that we can see reality as it is. So, um, with that said, when you hear stuff about exercises, uh, basically, if you're new to this whole kind of truth movement, as, like, as they call it, I don't really call it a truth movement, but whatever, if you're new to it, um, you hear about these emergency, uh, emergency exercises or these drills. Um, well, if you, 
the first, the only thing that you should really uh, understand about that whole thing is that it usually means that there's a possible false flag attack coming on. And a false flag, I mean government sponsored, either they directly cause an attack or they indirectly allow it to happen. So um, that's basically what you need to uh, what you need to know when you hear drills or exercises such as the uh, South Korea exercises and North Korea exercise too. So and, um, and there's a reason for that is because in case they get caught during the staging, right? In, in case they get caught during the staging. Uh, of the event, such as 9-11, like NORAD standing down, they can say, oh, we thought it was an exercise. We didn't know. We were just, hey, we were just carrying out an exercise. That's why our guys just happened to be right here at the spot, right? So, okay, let's move on here. Israeli forces injured two Palestinians in Israeli are as Israel steps up attacks against Palestinians, another shell fire has injured two young Palestinians in the northern Gaza Strip, say uh, Palestinian medical sources. Moving on here, no uh, decisive victory one year into Afghan surge, one year after President Barack Obama ordered a troop buildup to halt the Taliban's momentum, uh, in parentheses, after he <laughs> promised to bring the troops home before he was elected and the voters didn't know that he meant to take them out of Iraq and send them to Afghanistan. The war in Afghanistan has not broken decisively in favor of the U.S.-led forces, at least not yet. I'm sorry, guys, I had to include that in there because uh, it seems like the mainstream media has amnesia, and they don't really remember facts such as that. And uh, so that's why I like about press TV. Press TV, they'll throw in, uh, uh, you know, They'll throw in the whole, still make it an actual story, not a straight up propaganda piece, right? And I know they say that this is state run, so I'm sure there's disinformation in that. And you got to be, you know, armed for that. You got to be ready for it. It's everywhere. But still, they include a full story. They include history, whereas uh, propaganda pieces, they won't include it in there. So. NATO to face more violence next year, the spokesman for NATO's International Security Assistance Force, ISAF, says the U.S.-led alliance in Afghanistan will face increased violence in 2011. Hmm, I wonder how they know that. General Joseph Blatt's Monday remarks suggest that the number of foreign troop casualties next year will exceed of, will exceed of 2010, which has been the deadliest year of the war on record. They just know it. We're doing... Uh, we're going uh, to face more violence in 2011. It's not yet over. And, of course... What they're not going to tell you is it's never going to be over. The war on terror is infinite. It will never end. As long as there's people crying for freedom, there will be a war on terror. It says there will, be, uh, there will still be fighting. The work has not been done yet. The work is in killing people and having them capitulate. 52 billion of American aid and still Afghans are dying of starvation. Patrick Cockburn reports from Kabul on the rampant corruption that has left the country on its knees. So you go in there and check that out. The links will be posted in the video's description. As always, U.S.-led airstrike kills 25 Afghans. A fresh U.S.-led airstrike has claimed the lives of at least 25 people in the eastern Kunar province in war-ravaged Afghanistan. NATO claims that those killed in the Saturday airstrike were all Taliban militants, but the Afghan government has not confirmed the NATO report just yet. Taliban leader killed in Afghanistan, the NATO-led International Security Force, ISAF, says two militants, including a Taliban leader, have been killed in a joint Afghan-NATO raid in eastern Afghanistan. Next one up is jailed Afghan drug lord, CIA informant. A top Afghan drug lord uh, jailed in the United States since 2008 has been a central intelligence agency informant for years, the New York Times reports. It says uh, Yuma Khan was paid large sums of money to provide information about the Taliban, Afghan government, corruption, and other drug traffickers. The report added in 2008, Khan described as the most dangerous drug lord and the Taliban supporter was arrested and transported to New York to face charges under a new American narco-terrorism law. The newspaper quotes unmanned American, unnamed, sorry, American officials as saying that he was also a longtime American informer who provided information to CIA officers and Drug Enforcement Administration. So, uh, pretty crazy stuff. I think many of us understand or realize or are aware that the intelligence agencies need to do this in order to fund their illegitimate wars. They have to be in the drug trade. So, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry if that's the first time you're hearing that. Uh, like I said, it's pretty common knowledge. 
But uh, yeah, they <laughs> the CIA is basically running the drugs, guys. Sorry, and the banks who make the profits in Mexico for all the money laundering that comes out of Mexico and goes through Wells Fargo and banks like that. Yeah, they're money laundering the money for the for the drug cartels, and the intelligence agencies are the ones that are bringing it into the streets in the ghettos and uh, cultivating it in other countries. And that's how they make so much money because you know. You can fight illegitimate, illegal wars for so long without people looking at the books, right? So you got to create your own books. Well, that's your own books. Tribesman sues Islamabad CIA chief. A Pakistani tribesman has formally launched a criminal case against a Islamabad station chief of the CIA for conspiring to use non-UN sanctioned drone strikes. Karim Khan, a resident of the North Waziristan tribal district, filed an official complaint with Islamabad police against CIA station chief Jonathan Bank at the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad on Monday, a press TV correspondent reported. This is the first such case filed against a CIA official for the use of unsanctioned drone attacks in Pakistan. Khan's relatives were slain in an unauthorized U.S. drone attack in North Waziristan Tribal District in 2009. He said the drone attack killed my son, my brother, and a local man. We are not terrorists. We are common citizens, Khan told a news conference in Islamabad. Next one up, iPhone Snitch Network Launch, a new iPhone app with a misleading name, Patriot App, attempts to draw on the power of the Patriot movement, turning smartphone users into a gigantic uh, snitch network, and I love this little fascist eagle. Look at that, dude. It's a little Nazi eagle on that lock, and you got the little eye of Ra. I mean, come on, people. <laughs> it's uh, You can go to the actual website here, uh, patriotapps.com, and you can see for yourself. they got products, a Patriot app, school app, and a hospital app, and da good old-fashioned data mining. So a link will be posted, Obama's new tax on rainwater. And it says here, take a look at the EPA's own Federal Register uh, filing where the EPA generally describes the initiative it's proposing. Requirements including design or performance standards for stormwater discharges from at minimum newly developed and redeveloped sites, basically everywhere. EPA intends to propose regulatory options that revise the regulations and establish a comprehensive program to address stormwater discharges from newly developed and redeveloped sites and to take final action no later than November of 2012. This is bad news for those survivalists out there. You know, I live in an apartment, and I really would like to just have some a few drums out there, plastic drums to catch uh, storm water so that I can use it in my Berkey system and uh, have water in case, you know, whatever happens to the, to the uh, local water supply, you know. But, uh, you know, this is what it's all about. This is what the, the, the Food Modernization Act it's going to make it harder for you if you want to grow gardens. It's going to, and this is going to make it harder for you to collect stormwater. And it's all in the name of protecting you and making you safe. But in reality, you're going to starve to death and you're going to be poisoned because you're going to have to end up taking their water, their fluoridated water, and their GMO food. And, um, and yeah, so there you go. Uh, next one up, Obama's Evergreen Revolution, a ploy to push GMOs. The Obama administration is working towards a second green revolution in agriculture known as the Evergreen Revolution. And you can check out the link. I'm going to keep moving here because I still have plenty of articles to cover. IBM pitches a smart cities as uh, planet savers. IBM is helping cities worldwide get smarter about using resources in ways that are good for the earth as well as local budgets. This is crazy stuff, guys. Um, I'm not sure if they post a link in here, but I posted it in a recent article, and I'll try to post it in this video. They want to RFID all food. I'm not kidding you. They want to put little RFID chips in food. So, a New Jersey doctor supplied steroids to hundreds of law enforcement officers as firefighters. Canada negotiating perimeter security deal with the U.S. Can anyone say North American Union? Next one up, exclusive Internet was never free or open and never will be, media study, uh, studies professor says. Check that one out. Uh, Justice Department prepares for ominous uh, expansion of anti-terrorism law targeting activists. Yeah, it's a... Uh, that's not too good. Go in there and check that out. It says here, red light cameras monitor turns to law revision is to match uh, criteria used for ticketing. Talking about no turn on red. Next one up here is UK Fris second Indian diplomats. That's pretty crazy. Uh, the, it says here, the New York Police Department starts using iris scanners on suspects. And it says here, uh, let's move on here, tuition-free protesters infiltrated by gangs. Can you say anarchist or provocateurs? Vatican Bank allowed clergy to act as front for the mafia. Uh, CIA is helping create a militia in Somalia. That sounds real nice and productive. Obama's health care scheme ruled unconstitutional. 
and French knifemen detain preschoolers free. This is on the rise. This is GGN and I'm Darko.